welcome guys, what is going on? Yes, that is right, we have Professor Whiteboard Greg coming back out. We've got a lot of updates to go over tonight on the drag truck, on a couple different things, so we got we got the whiteboard. Everybody seemed to love that last time, so we're gonna make it interesting tonight. Stay tuned for some really sweet updates later on in this video on that whiteboard. Second thing, Wrenchworks, camo hats are finally, finally in. We have been waiting for these things. These things are sweet. Go check them out, wrenchworks.com. A um, lot of cool things coming on Wrenchworks. Stay tuned, but you might wanna grab these. These are not gonna be around for long. We don't have that many of them, so make sure you grab them. This shop is just a wreck. We need to do something about that. We need to kind of move this engine. We need to strip this thing down a little bit. Also, also, we are doing quite a bit of traveling here this week. Uh, we're going to be going somewhere, headed west uh, to, a, to a far, far land uh, to make some pretty awesome videos for you guys. Um, you guys are going to want to stay tuned. Make sure you guys are subscribed for the videos coming up this week. We're going to have a travel, kind of like getting there, um, and then a couple videos um, while we are there. I don't want to ruin the surprise. We got, we got to keep it pending for you guys, but it's by, by far going to be sweet. I can guarantee you that. One quick thing I do want to mention here right off the bat. If you did not see our last whiteboard session, uh, you might be a little confused on what is going on and why we are stripping this truck completely down. So uh, the 05, the blacked out quad cab, used to be our race truck, which we raced last year, the years previous to this. Uh, we have now changed paths with that, changing our silver sled over here to the full-time drag truck going to a regular cab uh, setup. This truck is getting put back together and pretty much going back on the street. So what we're doing is flip-flopping engine trans and transfer cases. That's why we have our 06 engine and the trans and transfers case out of that. That's going to be now transplanted in this truck after it's gone through and freshened up and all of the previous race stuff and the new engine that we blew up, well, not that we didn't blow up the new engine. The new engine that's coming because we blew up our old one. Everything is going to be now in this somewhat race truck platform. So that's what we're going to go over a little bit further. We have a lot of parts ordered. We have a call out already. The truck's not even done, but we have a little friendly competition going on with this new drag truck. I will get to that later on in this video. Stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss that news. So before we get too far, we started stripping down this old 5.9 engine here. Um, started taking all the harness off from the uh, passenger side over to the driver's side. Started labeling everything on its way out. Seeing that, this is probably going to get tossed in a bin with the computer. Um, it's pretty easy to know now where everything is, but I figured seeing that down the line, we're probably going to make this kind of like a standalone harness. Just label everything. That way we know when we're looking at it. Uh, exactly what everything is. So started taking off the fuel filter housing here. Uh, two banjo bolts, one here, one here. Not that big of a deal. Always the one on the bottom that you seem to forget. Even I forgot about that. So that is pretty much ready to be taken off. Heat exchanger over here. Just wanted to take a quick second, just give you a brief explanation. Um, 
does basically what the title is. It exchanges heat between the uh, coolant and the transmission fluid to help warm up your transmission fluid, seeing that uh, usually your coolant rises before the transmission fluid does. So, But when and if they do go bad, they mix coolant with your transmission fluid. Normally the reason why I just get rid of them altogether, especially for something that doesn't get driven a whole lot in extremely cold temperatures. So what that does as you can see, the uh, coolant line that goes around here goes around the other side of the engine. Uh, this other coolant line comes right here. And then your transmission lines basically, you know, go to your transmission. One goes to your cooler, one goes to your trans. So uh, all that is going to be deleted. Water pump is off. Alternator is off. This is the other coolant line you can see here. kind of comes up, wraps around here behind your turbo. Um, goes around the back side of your engine to the heat exchanger and then this is for your heater core line So the other thing this is a major 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 coolant leak uh, a lot of five nines that I've seen worked on um, This little hose joiner here between these two hard pipes and you can actually see See how this one's wet here actually was dripping just sitting in the engine when we moved it before earlier today this little joiner piece always leaks I don't I don't know what it is about that section but it seems to always leak right there you can kind of see right here it's wet because of that if you have a coolant leak in that general area down low there you might want to check there first. Current goals for this evening are not a whole lot. We're kind of taking it easy. I do have to go inside and still pack for later. Um, we're just going to try and get the harness off, see how far we can get, just kind of strip off the things that we know are going to be garbage and we don't really need to save. Um, maybe try and get the harness off. So let's continue. Let's get that done. See what else I can point out for you guys. So just another quick brief stoppage here. We decided to take off our CP3. Uh, three mounting studs to the case that have nuts on the back of them. One right here, one over top here on this other side, and then one very, very down low, which is a little bit of a pain to get to. Uh, once you disconnect those, obviously your fuel supply, your return hard line to the rail, and your FCA plug. You spin around here to the front. You have your little cover here, you take that off and then there's a nut and a lock nut, I'm sorry, a lock washer you do not want to drop. So we got that off um, and now we basically just need to jiggle wiggle and get that thing off and it's ready to come off and then we can continue with the rest of the removal. Here we are a little bit later, got the floor all cleaned up here a little bit, 
and everything put away. Pretty much everything that we took off tonight is just going to get replaced. Um, not going to trust what was on there by any means. Uh, so took off quite a bit. As you can see, now you can see the whole entire side of the engine. Got the water pump, like I said. Still got a lot of the front accessories on. Still got the whole uh, exhaust side on as well. But a good first night's progress. All that we have really saved from the entire truck thus far is our CP3 core, eh, all the bolts that we've taken apart, and our computer and the harness. That's about it. That's, that's pretty much all that we have saved. Everything that's come off in the meantime has either been tossed and is not going to be reused by any means. We also have a lot of spare stuff over here as well. I've got, I've got, I've got all this spare common rail stuff out the butt. I don't need all of this spare other crap that we're not going to use. So good first day. Uh, we do actually have a couple things in the PO box, so we're going to open up those quick. Oh, look at that. That is sweet. Uh, first from the PO box is from our man Noah Jenkins. Very awesome note, basically uh, just appreciating the channel and the knowledge that he has learned um, from watching the videos. Um, and and I just I, I appreciate these letters very very much. Um, they they definitely keep me motivated. So thank you very much, Noah. He also included uh, this awesome sick picture of the first gen and the Wrenchworks logo. Super awesome. That is sweet, man. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. This second one is addressed to me and Mr. Send It, but he is not here, so we will just clue him in on what this may or may not be here. Dang, look at these. Look at this. These are some sweet shirts. Diesel Nutrition Facts. I don't know if this says who it's from though. I hope there's a note in here. Does this not say? I don't think this says who it is from. Man, look at this. <laughs> Diesel nutrition facts. There we go. <laughs> yes. 0% spark plugs. That's awesome. So we got a size for me and a size for John. That's awesome, whoever sent these, you are the man, or woo man. Thank you very much, we appreciate that. That is freaking awesome. Doesn't say anything on here, it says, Martin, Tennessee, AM t-shirts. I don't know who that's from. But we will make sure we give that shirt to John maybe tomorrow or the next day before we leave for our little trip here the next day. We are back the final day before we leave. By the time you're watching this, I will be on the plane headed somewhere. You guys will find out soon. But I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Last night was a little bit late. I was like, you know what? I can't do this. We need we need to go inside. But anyway, we have a lot of packing still left to do tonight. Uh, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. I want to close out this video with the updates with the, with the person who thinks, thinks that they might beat this fine specimen of a four-wheel drive diesel truck. But anyway, so the, what are the updates? The updates on the Silver Sled. The, the Silver Sled is not gonna be the name. We're, we're, we're gonna rename it, it's gonna transform. W once it comes into its own, then we will rename it. But for now, seeing that it's still silver, which it may not always be silver, it's the Silver Sled. Anyway, so as you guys know, a big question that was getting asked was, why did we sell the bed off the truck. Why are we stripping this thing down? Well, in order to be fast, you gotta be light. The, the lighter you are, the faster you can possibly be. So what we are gonna end up doing, as you guys know, I did have a budget uh, allowance for fixing the body on that truck. We were gonna get new fenders, a cow hood, um, fix the bed or get a new bed, get new doors. Well, seeing that we're going drag truck, we wanna be a little bit on the lighter side. So if you guys have seen uh, a lot of drag trucks, you guys know that they just really pretty much hang bed sides um, and, and run fiberglass. So that is what, look at my hair. We're getting a, we're getting a haircut tonight too, guys. Um, we're gonna, we, we were pretty much, we already ordered yesterday, we ordered all of the fiberglass. The fiberglass takes possibly up to two months to get to. Um, so we ordered the fiberglass. That is on its way. Um, we're actually scheduled for our cage work. Um, that's gonna be coming up 
you know as the fiberglass stuff comes so that is really the main update on it that's the reason why we sold the bed that's the reason why we're kind of lightening up getting away from steel parts going to fiberglass uh, doors bedsides full one-piece front clip uh, you guys will see that as it comes in uh, we're gonna get that all mounted up get the cage work done then we can start really going at it so that is the stuff that's in the works already being prepared for behind the scenes so a lot, you guys are going to see a lot more strip down work of the drag truck because that is all needs to get done. So in order to mount all of the fiberglass, all the whole steel front section has to come off. The whole wiper cowl section has to come out. Uh, we got a lot of cutting and grinding left to do. Ultimately, I did want to wait to be in the new shop for, but I don't want to be behind schedule as far as getting this truck on the track as soon as possible. Now usually how my winter schedule goes is I say that, I plan it, um, as things unravel and unfold we keep you know losing a week here, a week there, next thing you know my stuff isn't even ready to be on the track until mid, mid, you know, and I want to get that, I want to get it on the track as soon as possible. The reason being, we have somebody to race. Now this fellow someone also happens to have a YouTube channel, it's not even a truck, it's a car. It's a car called the Cow. What? You know who you are, Mr. John Doc. That's right. You and your cow are going to get taken to the butcher. Because we're about to kill that cow. Ooh, ah. Anyway. Pow. Oh! Me and Mr. John Doc do have a little friendly rivalry going back and forth uh, between the cow and, uh, you know, what he likes to call the teat. But that would be incorrect. He is so, he is so wrong. He doesn't understand how fast these trucks can be. Now he just sees a big heavy four-wheel drive truck. Now some of you guys that follow along know how fast these trucks can go. Now what's that you ask? What's that you ask? How fast is John Doc's car? Well, that's a great question. Was it faster than you expected? I mean... He goes so fast that the, the, the scoreboard can't even catch him. That's how fast he goes. He runs no times because he's so embarrassed. <laughs> about the, the slow times that he runs. That he's got to tell people that he runs 10 seconds. But anyway, again, all in good fun, all in good fun. Uh, we know that John runs uh, pretty deep into the nines. Uh, with the winter coming, who knows what he's going to change. We already did spank John once. <laughs> in the silver sled. Uh, he's going to say some kind of crap about giving me half track and this and that. All I know is that those were the terms and that and, and he got his ass whooped. And so he's going to say that he's going to pull the chute on us and all this stuff, you know, but the, the fiberglass doesn't even have taillights. So I don't even know what to tell him he's going to see. I might even put a, I might even put a big sticker on the back window so he can read uh, maybe when he's behind me for uh, that quarter mile.
you didn't know, that pretty much explains what's gonna happen. Zoom, zoom, we win, Greg's happy. John, cow, move over, red light, and then he cries. Anyway, we do, this is all in good fun, we love John. Um, we are gonna make a little wager here when we get closer. The, tr the truck is so far away from even being done that this is a little ridiculous, uh, even thinking about this race. But it doesn't hurt to badger each other and have a little fun with it. So uh, throughout the course of the build, we will be going over our whiteboard here just uh, with any changes that might come about. One last thing I actually did forget, go make sure you subscribe to John Doc's channel. Uh, his videos are great, his content is good. I'm sure he's gonna make a response video calling us slow and all kinds and names and stuff so make sure you go subscribe to keep up with this uh, banter that we have going back and forth um, and go go comment on one of his last videos something dumb tell him Greg A sent you there that you know he's slow and he has a cow or something like that another update another awesome update I noticed that the exhaust was getting a little bit louder on the tow rig if you can see right here that looks like a little soot action um, I'm sure it's probably still hot and I'm gonna burn my hand yes it is that flange, I think, I forget, I think it was Andrew's truck uh, that we had to get a new downpipe for. The flange that's welded on uh, looks like it is cracked and it's just hanging on by dear life there. So we are leaving, but that is going to need to be taken care of as soon as we get back, seeing that we sold our danger. What a, what a lovely choice that was. Make sure you guys are stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Like I mentioned, they are going to be awesome. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Don't miss a dang thing. Hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. See you guys tomorrow.